this motor, you can tell that it has thermistors in it. When taking data on an incoming motor, it is very, very critical that you look at the leads, peel them back a little bit to see what's behind the sleeving. Now a lot of people will use a solid lead wire coming out rather than two small wires from a thermistor. Now since we identified this is a solid lead underneath the sleeving, we're going to trace it back into the frame until you, were, until you see where the insulation ends to properly identify what exactly it is. This is your thermistor coming back into one solid lead, followed up by insulation for extra protection coming outside of the frame. This motor, they have thermistors. So when you install the RTDs, we're going to put two per phase, three phases. So we're going to put six in. We're going to start here, come all the way around, skipping a group in between each RTD. When we install them, secure the RTDs with tie cord and secure them. So once we get all of our RTDs installed, we bring them out through the box or you can keep them on top since it's open and you can go through simply with an ohm meter and you can check your continuity to make to ensure there's no damage that occurred during the installation process. So you take your red lead and one white and you're going to touch your probes to it. You're going to set it on ohms on your meter. and we are getting 108 ohms. Now to make sure that's correct, you'll take your probe and you'll stick it to your other white one and it will light off or give a beeping sound. In the video, you saw Caleb taking a resistance value of 108 ohms on his RTD. First, you want to grab your temperature gun, measure the temperature off of the RTD where it was placed on the windings. Then you want to grab your RTD book, locate the value of 108 ohms, convert that to temperature. Then your RTD should be reading the same temperature as you took with the gun. You can also do that with your heaters too, which we installed a heater in the top or the bottom, or as most call it, the connection end or the opposite connection side. Airing RTDs come in standard oversized lengths and must be customized. You insert the new RTD into its location in the motor through the bearing housing until the RTD tip touches the temp measurement surface. You then mark the RTD at the length needed to end outside the motor. Using a pipe cutter, you cut the RTD tube 
to its new custom length. The RTD is then placed into its housing mount. The housing mount is then screwed into the housing. In oil bath systems, it's important to use sealant to prevent oil leakage. Hi, I'm Marvin with Reed Electric and Fuel Service. And today I'm here to show you a different form of installing stator and bearing RTDs. As you can see here, we have our six winding RTDs, two per phase, and we also have our bearing RTDs, one on the lower end and one on the upper end. As you can see here, that our customer installed all of his RTDs. He installed two 100 ohm platinum RTDs, one for the upper bearing and one for the lower bearing. He also installed six uh, winding RTDs, two per phase, and he also installed his heaters. That way, when his motor is not running, he can keep all possible moisture out of his windings. Here's a way to find out if your RTDs are actually working. First step, you want to grab a multimeter. Second step, you want to set that multimeter to resistance. And then you want to check both your winding and bearing RTDs. If you have a zero resistance reading, your RTD is bad. For these 100 ohm platinums, your resistance should be 100 ohms. Everything is good.